team having in mind that Magento 1.6 is uh, not history yet, but Magento 2.x is definitely our future and e-commerce future and uh, we should think about it, learn about it as fast as we can. Uh, another thing which is also really important for um, uh, internet and what is going on around us are APIs. And uh, it's growing and uh, really fast, it's used more and more and all big systems are developing uh, uh, those kind of web services who can support a lot of uh, stuff. Uh, why API? Uh, first of all, for newbies, what is F API? So application programming interface uh, who enables you to connect Magento and uh, uh, some other external, external service without uh, any knowledge about Magento, PHP, MySQL, so you can use your chosen programming language and work with resources which you have in Magento. Uh, uh, for uh, when to use it and why to use it. So uh, I saw like uh, two purposes of APIs. The first one is uh, you can, for example, create application uh, which uh, users can download from App Store and they can shop in your store. For example, you can make application that your employee in physical store can help his customer to sell more, to sell better, to sell faster. Then you have another approach where you can improve Magento business logic because Magento is good, but it's, you know, it does not support all the things which merchants need in some points. So you can uh, make connection to some other systems. So for example, customer rela relationship management or content management on, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> uh, or stuff like that. So, um, where we were. Yes, so uh, make those kind of integrations just to uh, improve uh, current business logic and make it better. So uh, for Magento 1.x, we had uh, SOAP and uh, REST API. Kind of, yeah, going crazy. Okay, let's, um, <laughs> let's fix this. Yeah. Two minute break, because this is annoying, I'm not sure. I think it comes from the other room. <laughs> so the other guy's talking really fast. <laughs> 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 because I'm almost on my last slide. <laughs> On the bug. We, f we switched the remotes. Oh. <laughs> so probably in the other room, they're all going crazy. <laughs> okay. Uh, one more, please. Yes. Thanks. So uh, we said Magento 1.x supports SOAP and REST API. Uh, at first, we started with SOAP. So that's the first thing, uh, SOAP XML RPC-based API with only two methods, call and multi-call method. Uh, and that were the just, let's say, beginnings of uh, this kind of connection. With Magento 1.3, we already, uh, already uh, SOAP version 2 was released, so V2. And the main thing there is that call and multi-call methods are replaced with uh, different uh, separate methods for each API resource. Uh, we had one VSDL uh, file and then in uh, Magento 1.6 the SOAP uh, VSC compliant version came out uh, which uh, actually enables uh, generating client class uh, using uh, some standard libraries for all other programming languages. So for example for Java, .NET, whatever you want to use. Uh, it was always wise, uh, widely used and developed. So SOAP connection in Magento 1.x really supports a lot of business logic and uh, it has a lot of documentation and uh, it it's, uh, de was also developed almost till the end of development of Magento 1 version. For uh, difference, the REST API came in later and um, I think it was not so well supported, not so much used 
and the resources which were ab available in REST API were much, much lower. M so you can do much less with REST uh, API. Uh, for, uh, uh, to connect to SOF, we were using BSDL files. So you know URL, SOF client, I personally use SOF QE, I don't know, whatever you prefer. So you have to load this VSDL file to see all the functions and to see what you can actually do with the disconnection. Uh, uh, to log into SOAP, uh, you have to have a SOAP user, which is created by website, uh, website administrator in admin and pass. And uh, after a user is created and um, assigned, you can proceed with, uh, with all, all the stuff uh, for uh, REST. Next. Ah, we have a list of functions basically. Now, so uh, the, uh, it's not all, it's just some small things to see how much we can do. So basically, we could uh, manipulate with the data in the catalog, so manage categories, inventory, products, uh, customers, customer addresses in Magento, gift messages. Uh, then uh, it covered complete sales, so orders, invoices. Uh, Shipments, credit memos, shopping carts, store information, so all, all, all. Uh, what, what is actually a cool thing about this? So you could access those information if you have correct user and correct uh, access rights, correct user role. So you could uh, uh, basically browse and take this information into your application, into your system, without doing anything with Magento and without Magento server or direct access. Uh, uh, then we have REST API. So as I said, it, it was not really, really used a lot. And uh, uh, I think uh, the first uh, what we could do there was just uh, managing inventory and products uh, in the catalog. Maybe a bit about customers, uh, for sales, only orders, and that was it. But the rest is uh, kind of uh, more interesting thing today because um, it's using HTTP protocol to connect uh, uh, to web service. So all applications and all other stuff are, let's say, working easier. It's much, um, uh, let's say, user friendly. So uh, what I saw today, actually what I saw when I started this research about two, Magento 2.0 is that actually, uh, uh, there is a lot of documentation about REST and just a little bit about SOAP. I don't know, maybe they will fix it. That uh, I'm not sure. But for now, uh, we have a uh, much bigger accent on uh, REST API. Um, yes? Next, <laughs> please. Thank you. Okay, so audit authentication types. <laughs> in uh, Magento 2. Uh, basically, uh, they are using three things. All of the authentication type. Uh, they are using uh, tokens for mobile applications and third part party applications, and they are using login credentials. Uh, most of it is, um, let's say, much, much easy and safe. What is interesting, uh, you can, uh, for example, have a login user in uh, Magento, and the uh, application is communicating uh, with web service and getting token in return using user type. So each user has its own user type. Uh, with those kind of communication, you get token and you can get access to just some certain resources you need for uh, functioning of that part of application. In the other hand, uh, you can have third party application. Uh, it's called integration in Magento 2. So you can create that integration um, uh, in uh, Magento Admin, of course, by merchandiser, by website owner, uh, and uh, give uh, uh, integration access rights, and then you have uh, access token, which is unique, and which, uh, which can, again, only access only certain uh, application resources. Or, at the end, login credentials, which is typical user created in Admin uh, with some role. Uh, so, uh, as I said, their resources are allowed to access uh, and they are assigned separately to each account. Uh, I think we said this. Okay, so the current API is based, based on a few models. That is create, read, update, delete, and search. 
Unfortunately, they don't support web hooks yet, but I hope it will come in later, because this is also a nice thing to have. Uh, the framework supports field filtering, which is nice uh, in, in, just in short, in, in this way. Um, for example, you have a call to web service and you want order, but you want, for example, just order ID. You don't need anything else. Uh, in normal, um, in old times, let's say, you would probably get order with 50 fields, with, uh, with all, all unnecessary information. And right now, with this field filtering, you can only get your, your information. So you can say what you want. It is really saving a bandwidth, uh, for example, for mobile applications. And it's making our job, I think, uh, a bit easier, because we don't have to search all that, through that. Uh, also, we have um, interesting thing is that you can make one connection, so single web API connection, and you can use then multiple web services. Meaning that you can do one call and uh, use a lot of functions in the same time. Uh, in uh, Magento 2.6 top, uh, they actually changed the way how it's working. Uh, before we were loading one VSDL file, and uh, we were looking uh, uh, in the list of functions and using them. But today, in Magento 2.6, we have a VSDL which is actually generated in fly. So uh, when you uh, define a URL for VSDL file, you also have addition for service names. And you say, I want to use, for example, catwalk product something, resource. And then you get only the resources you want. So each user which is connected to SOAP has a different VSDL file and different resources to manipulate with and to work with. Um, next slide, please. Yeah. <coughs> yes. Uh, to see the list of functions which are now available because it's not uh, always the same, uh, you go to URL. So uh, I, I went there and I saw a lot of things uh, again. So managing categories, inventory, products, attributes, attributes, attributes so whatever you, you, you can think of. Uh, everything what is in Magento is almost now available in, the, in those kind of connections, in the API connections. Uh, and uh, uh, now we are going on the rest. So as I said, HTTP requests, um, uh, it's not a big change, in, so uh, the, the required things. It has to have HTTP header, uh, which uh, provides authentication token. We were talking about authentication earlier, and some other instructions which are necessary for uh, service. Then you are sending the verb, get, post, put, or delete, uh, to mark the action. Then, of course, you have to define, define an endpoint, your web service URL, service name, and the resource you want to use. And you have to send of, uh, attributes. So the, those are required or optional. Uh, actually, information needed for your uh, request to be fulfilled. Uh, the, uh, that uh, attributes are sent to request body, which now can be in JSON or XML format. And I think it's always a bit different, but I'm not, I'm not really sure because I didn't use the rest a lot. Uh, as response, Magento will uh, authenticate user every time and return call if every, everything is okay. So it will return requested data and HTTP call. Um, to use um, your own uh, application through API, your own extension, for example, through API, or to enable some other Magento resource to use API, you only need to change, uh, actually add permissions in a web API XML configuration file. Uh, in that moment, it's becoming accessible on the internet and you can use it. Uh, mobile applications are using tokens. Uh, I will, can we skip this? <laughs> the next one. Okay, so also uh, for REST service, uh, we are using uh, like um, uh, 
uh, same as uh, you saw, you, so you have URL where, where you can browse and see the list of all functions. And I was really surprised when I saw it because it's completely same as for SOAP. So you can now do everything, whatever you want. And uh, number of, uh, I think, uh, people who are using it will be also surprisingly higher. And uh, I hope when we meet again in two years, uh, we will talk how cool actually it is and what we could build with it. Uh, so now you can uh, change backend <coughs> catalog, so let's not talk about it. This was just a list to, to show you how it's exactly the same as, as in SOAP. Uh, and uh, yeah, so a little bit of practice. So I was playing around uh, and I was thinking, okay, well, what I can do to, I don't know, try it out. Uh, I'm working on product importers a lot and uh, I'm working on the raw code. I, I'm not working with API most of the time. I'm working with API, but for other things. And I was like, hmm, is it fast? Can I make it now? to work through soft, through API, and not having code on there. So I made two, uh, small two modules. Uh, one was for, for Magento 1.6, and another one was for Magento 2.6. Uh, to use that module in Magento 1.6, I had to create soft user in admin, to get token, to, uh, and um, yeah, so you have here explanation. I used the uh, data flow export to just to have Let's say default values, which we usually have in there. I was importing simple products. Uh, I was respecting e-commerce discount, so my number of rows was 4,999. And uh, uh, yes, and then I load so VSDL and started with functions. I had to use two functions uh, for Magento 1.6 login and catalog product 3.8. Uh, what I highly do not recommend, don't create client every time when you are in the loop. Do it once in constructor. It's much faster <laughs> and much better. Uh, my notes, drop down and multi-select attributes, uh, require option ID. Uh, the rest was all fine, but option ID, that, that's not handy information. That's not something we know. So you have to use something else to get that information. I didn't do that now in code. It was, it was just a quicky thing to, to do. So I put in some values to see if they will import, if they will be imported, and it worked. So it's working, but it's uh, option ID is required. Website in Magento 1.6 is not automatically added. So if you don't define website, product will, will be outside, nowhere. Uh, category IDs, only if you are send them in array. Uh, for attribute set, uh, you need to, of course, uh, provide attribute set ID. Again, the same thing as option ID. But in Magento 1.6, actually, it was, um, I don't know, not really clear. It was not really, uh, really clear what I needed to do. So I was trying this, 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 and then, yeah, it worked. It worked with attribute ID. Uh, and um, image import was not possible at all. Products were visible in front, and that was interesting. So no re-index, nothing, the, just when import is finished, everything is visible and everything is online. Uh, and now I had some average values uh, for 4,999 of products. Uh, so it took like 3.8 hours on Magento, PHP, uh, oh, sorry, on PHP 5.6, and on, uh, wait, 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 please. <laughs> on Magento 5.6, uh, and uh, time per product was around uh, 273 seconds, memory used 144. It's kind of, you know, not bad, but yeah, okay. So let's see what happened with Magento 2. Uh, module, so. You, we have a new module. You have to be, uh, do integration, meaning you go to Magento Admin, click on integration, add your module there, um, add the role to that module, so you allow or not allow to uh, access some resources, and to my module, I actually allowed to use all. <laughs> uh, then uh, uh, you need to activate uh, 
that uh, integration and you're getting four keys. From those four keys, you only use access token uh, for a connection. Uh, then, of course, you create SOAP client, you log in, and the function we were using there is uh, Next slide. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, was uh, create product resource v1 something like that. Create catalog pro. So uh, this processing class. So I was thinking about programmers a bit. So I was like, ah, oh, they, they don't like a lot of theory. They they like code more. <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking maybe uh, I could show you how it looks uh, actually like uh, in um, in. Uh, in in the code. Uh, I only had two files in both extensions. So one file was processing the data, reading the CSV file and blah, 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 and another one was just making connection and adding product to, to Magento store. And uh, uh, this file, which is reading CSV and so on and so on, I, I don't really want to explain that. I think it's easy and we all did that uh, so many times. So the only thing uh, which is important here is uh, that uh, the both SOAP and the rest requires some, let's say, special structure of array uh, uh, to be given so you can uh, achieve your, your goal. <laughs> and uh, for example, here you have a product for, uh, to define one product. Then you have some, um, uh, let's say, default values like uh, SKU, name, and stuff like that. Then you have uh, extension attributes and custom attributes. And uh, depending in, uh, so also you have a special, um, uh, let's say, sub array for images. You have special sub array for inventory. So whatever you want to import, you have uh, a way how to add it to, to this object. And when you create this, basically you're done. You only need to copy top. So next slide. Now this is the SOAP client, uh, the file which is calling SOAP and doing these things. So as I said, client is defined in construct class, and that's really important. Uh, for example, uh, if you make mistake like I did, I admit it, uh, in Magento 1.x you will get just a lot slower import, but it will not crash, it will work, just really slow. In Magento 2 you will crash, it will crash after 250 connections. It doesn't allow you to do it more. Like it said, you're stubborn, but I'm not working like that. Do something else. Uh, so yes, it's working like this. And uh, you see, it's, it's really, really small code. It's nothing complicated. I have extension which has over 60 files, I think, 70. Just for this. No, not for this, but for, for similar thing, thing to import product to Magento. Next slide. Uh, so, uh, yeah, finally, catalog product repository v1 save. That's the function I used. And uh, my notes, drop downs and multi select attributes again required option ID. So, that's the thing I, I really don't like. Uh, but the products are automatically assigned to websites. So, if you don't add anything, it, they will be in page websites. It's pretty cool. Um, they can be assigned to categories. I was reading the. the manuals, but I actually didn't find how to add product to category in uh, Magento 2.x. I, then I decided why, why I don't try. I will just uh, send category IDs and array and see what will happen, and it worked. And actually it worked. Uh, attribute set also, uh, ID is required, but it's possible, it's working. Uh, then you can import all attribute types, you can import all images, you can uh, manage inventory of that product, you can add cross cells, you can add up cells, you can uh, make all types of products, so not only simple products, you can create also configs, bundles, downloadable, whatever is accessible in, in Magento 2.x. And of course after import they're all visible and they're all cool over there. Nothing to do with it. We are done. The times, yeah, a bit faster, but not a lot. So total time for import was about three hours. Uh, per product, 2.17 seconds, memory 1.3. And then, yeah, I was talking with some people and they said, ah, oh, you know, PHP 7 is cool. Everything is faster, everything is really, really cool. So I was like, huh? 
well, why not? Why we don't try that? Maybe it's really cool. And my results are, you see, like this. Uh, it is a bit faster. It's spending much less memory. So for memory, it is cool. But the time, almost the same. At least for API. I don't know for the rest. This is what I got. Now, uh, as I said, I'm working on product importers. This is my time. <laughs> So we are importing products in 0.1 seconds to 0.2. Uh, I'm glad that it's nice and that they are working on it. And uh, I believe really that um, it will find uh, its use in a lot of areas. But I decided not not in product import now. <laughs> uh, so just some highlights. Uh, we have soft and REST, we said that. We have a single API call for multiple web services, which is pretty cool. Uh, uh, we have um, different formats for uh, request and response body in uh, REST call. And uh, my final con conclusions were, uh, the next one please, in the table. So uh, this is what I think is important. Uh, do good documentation for developers, uh, good consistency, so you don't have to read and to dig into the documentation each time when you want to use something. Uh, nice working examples, so you can learn faster and uh, get some better ideas maybe, or I don't know, find new approach for something. And of course, performance. We are all, all caring about that. Well, yeah, that was it. <laughs> Questions? So, um, seeing from the slides and seeing from uh, all the information you gave about uh, the Magento 2 API, uh, it looks like it's a lot less work than, uh, for example, creating a, a mobile application. Uh, and, for example, um, I remember this pro project I did uh, for a developing company I worked for, and uh, we, uh, we had to make some filtering in a, in a mobile application page uh, to filter out some products. It was a, a real hell to get all the, the products out of, uh, out of Magenta. It was really slow. Um, but uh, what are your experience with uh, creating um, a filtered selection of products and retrieving that from the API? Is that fast enough for the user experience to present like 20, uh, 50 or 20 products? Or well, to be honest, I didn't try it out yet. No, okay. no, I didn't have time to do it, but I will do it, yes, of course. I will continue testing this. This is the only, only the beginning of it. And uh, I will continue to, to test it and to see where we can really use it and mm -hmm. where, where it... Cool. I'm interested in that too. Yeah, it's, it looks promising. It yes. looks really cool. It looks really cool, I agree. Oh, thank you. Somebody else? Okay. Well, thank you. I'm done. Good. <laughs>